Oh, Angeli, is that music I hear? Are you having a party? Not precisely a party, no. Where are you? Have you found a place yet? More that the place has found me. You see me yet again locked up in the Chateau Loche. Ah, uh, here I am. It's, it's not far from home. It's, it's still in the Loire Valley, but but it's not home. So you're in your tower and I'm in mine and neither of us can get to the ones we love? Isn't it fascinating that so many of our stories, Ned, the white cat, fairer than a fairy, have featured towers. Isolation, imprisonment, it's as if we foretold it. Well, speaking as someone who has been accused of witchcraft, I would say that there is nothing magical at all about this. My own mother was locked away for years, and Henri, Julie and I, to also be imprisoned shouldn't be so startling. It is a threat which has been shadowing us for all of our lives. But as the fairies in our own fairy tales, we can change this story. We can create our own adventures. We can leave our towers and islands of isolation and go forth to, to make the world what we wish. I, I have written my own story about just such a, an island of magnificence. I call it the Isle of Magnificence. Would you care to? Yes, we would. Please do. On the Isle of Magnificence, not so distant as you might suppose, there lived a mighty fairy queen who had won the love of a mortal prince, Antajour. But a queen must be able to rely on her consort, and alas, poor Antajour, time and again forgot his responsibilities, lost in love for her. At last, she determined to put him to the test. If you would wish to live always by my side, you must defeat three fierce enemies. The depths of the sea, a mighty dragon, and the tomb. But because I love you and always will, Take with you these three talismans on your quest, this snow-white horse, this silver sword, and the gift of speech. Go now. But the first thing that Antajor had to do was to, to find a way to leave the Isle of Magnificence. And in due course, he found a, a magic herb growing by the shore, and he, he gathered it up and, and made a salve that he rubbed against the hooves of his snow-white horse. And when he mounted, that snow-white horse could walk across the waters. Antajor had defeated the depths of the sea. And on the mainland, they could go on through a deep, a dark forest amidst rustling leaves and the whisper of the wind and the song of the bird until Antajor discovered a great beauty, the song of a nightingale. Ah, if only you could speak, he said, out of all his loneliness. And at once the song of the nightingale became a story. Once upon a time, said the nightingale, a wicked fairy Berlingot lusted after noble Prince Grandamont and took Grandamont's true love, Philomel, and turned her into a bird. And a bird she will remain until the day she finds her own true home. But even as the nightingale spoke, the sky was darkening, the wind was picking up, a storm threatened. And so the bird flew on, leading Antajur on his snow-white horse to the safety of a cave. But was this cave so safe? For as soon as he entered, Antajur found a lion. Antajur would have fled, but, but 
but the lion did not want to devour him. Oh no, he came forward closer, rubbing his golden mane against Santa Jaw's leg, like a great big dog. And then he turned and, and led Antigua further into the cave and until they came to a space, a, a bedroom filled with books and with art. Antigua looked around in amazement. If only you could speak to explain to me these wonders. Allow me to present myself, said the lion. I am Prince Brandemont. Cursed to remain as a lion until I can defeat the strongest dragon in the land. This dragon is the son of the wicked fairy Berlingot who cursed my true love Philomel to be a bird. Berlingot is certain that I can never defeat the dragon and so I am doomed to remain a lion Always. Antidur pledged his friendship. Together we will find this dragon. Together we will defeat him. And off they rode. But Antidur on his snow white horse with his silver sword, and, and beside him the golden maned lion, Prince Grandamont. And above them, leading them on, Philomel, the nightingale, flying on, leading them over hill and hollow, across river and stream, until they reached a village. Yeah. You have come on a sorry day indeed, said the villagers. For this is the day when the fiercest dragon in the land has vowed to destroy our own beloved Princess Blanchette. He has held her prisoner in a tower these many days, held her for his own fiendish pleasures, and has vowed to destroy anyone who would seek to save her. As soon as they heard this, Antidure and Grandemont raced towards the tower of Blanchette. None too late, for just as they arrived, from the core of the setting sun came the dragon, flying in straight to Blanchette. But as he flew above, the lion roared, and the dragon swirled in the air to look down upon his enemies. <laughs> he was not afraid, for he had always been victorious. But he had never faced two such bold and noble princes before. The lion leapt and he dragged down the dragon down to the earth, pouncing on him, holding him firm with his claws. Antidor drew his silver sword and plunged it deep into the heart of the dragon, who died. Antidor had completed his second task. He looked around for the lion, but there was no lion, and standing in his place was the noble Prince Grandemont. But Grandemont could not rejoice, not while Philomel remained a bird. Princess Blanchette rushed from the palace, rushed from the tower, showering them with gratitude. But her first concern was for her own true love, Verdelet king of the Isle of Lettuces. For when the dragon had kidnapped Blanchette, his mother, the wicked fairy Berlinguet, had taken Verdelet, taken him away, hidden him in a castle dark and gloomy. He had never been seen since. They went off in search of him, searched until they found that dark and gloomy castle. And they entered. Antigua went first. The first room they entered was small, dark, but it was not empty. Inside it was filled with spiders. Antigua drew his sword and he began to hack away, cutting and slicing, cutting off the legs of the spiders. And from the distance they heard a scream, the scream of Burlingate. Ah! 
You are cutting off my legs! Into the second room they went. And this room, too, was filled with foul beasts. Wasps. And again, Antidor drew his sword, and again he began to slice away. And again they heard that distant scream. Ah! You are chopping off my arms! Antidor went forward into the last room, the smallest, the darkest of all. And there he found a snake. And for the third time, he took his sword and sliced, beheading the snake. Silence. Berlingert would trouble them no more. Antidor looked around the room and found a long box covered by a black cloth. And for the third time, he used his gift of speech. Speak now and rise up among the living. And at these words, Verdelay leapt forward from his tomb and spoke the word he'd longed to say. Blanchette. And so they returned to the Isle of Magnificence. Blanchette and Verdelet, Philomel and Grandemont, and Antichor riding on his snow-white horse and carrying his silver sword, until at last they all returned to the Isle of Magnificence to a great celebration of three weddings. Three. Because as soon as they had set foot on the Isle of Magnificence, Philomel was transformed. She had found her true home. And Antigor, safe in the arms of his fairy queen once more, he too had found his own home. And by her side he would remain always on the Isle of Magnificence. This story reminds me of how Mary Catherine Salon was an island of magic. We've gone out to face all the threats and the wicked fairies of the world. Or, or kings, yes. But if that is true, Charlotte Rose, then we can have hope of defeating these malevolent forces and return victorious. And if not to your Salon, Mary Catherine, then perhaps we can create something for ourselves. That, that party you can hear, that is my own attempt to create a new salon where I am with, with new stories and new friends. It is only when we can gather together to share our stories that we can escape any of our prisons. <laughs>